Hello, my name is Paul Martinelli, and I'm the president of the John Maxwell team. And again, I'm honored to be here with John Maxwell and Les Brown, two top speakers who have both had an incredible journey over the last 40 years, coaching, teaching, training, and speaking into millions of lives worldwide. And their efforts are all about adding value to people. Guys, again, how nice it is to have you guys back on the set for our continuation here into this, uh, this video series that we're doing. So I hope you enjoyed video number one, Behind the Stage, The Good, the Bad, and the Ugly, where John and Les shared some of the good of what they've experienced all over these last 40 <laughs> long, year long, long, years. long years. And, you know, you can't have good experiences without some bad experiences. And that's really what we're gonna talk about. So, you know, these are the missed opportunities that Les and John have had. And I'm sure that there's been a lot of sacrifices that both of you have had to make in order to be where you are. And probably some failures. So why don't we go ahead and, why don't we start with you, Les? So this way you don't steal all of John's, because John, John accused you in the good of taking all of his lines. Or maybe you accused John he of taking accused his lines. He right accused me. That's right. He accused right. you. He accused and, he, you. and that's true. <laughs> that's, that's true. Yeah. So we're going to put you on the spot. Why don't you go ahead and jump in and share some, you know, share some one of, of the, the bad. One of the bad experiences I had, I, I was giving a speech in New York, over 3,000 people. And, and a new person on my staff came down front to stage right and stood there with a note. Now, my regular staff members know I'm speaking, I'm on a roll, and I, unlike John, I move back and forth. Don't interrupt me. And so I, I looked at this person, and my body language indicated, I'm not coming over there. And I went to stage left, and this person stood there like, I'm not leaving until you do. <laughs> so I went over, I got the note from the person, I put it on the stand, I continued to speak, and I glanced at it, and this note said, your fly is open. <laughs> I looked down, not only was my zipper down, but my shirt, the puck, it had puckled out. <laughs> out of my pants. And so I said, oh my God. <laughs> I stepped behind the podium and I, I put my shirt back in my pants and zipped my pants up and I came from behind the, the podium. Everybody said, oh, <laughs> somebody told me. Oh, it's about that. So time. I knew I had to deal with it. I said, excuse me. I've been going back and forth up here for 30 minutes, and somebody just told me that my zipper was down and my pants were all sticking, my shirt was sticking out. I said, why didn't somebody say something earlier? And a lady down front said, I thought it was a part of your presentation. <laughs> I said, I'll go pray for you. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. That was really embarrassing. I, I turned red, but they couldn't see it. So it, was, it was, I've heard some presentations who were some poor. That's what they ought to do. <laughs> Distract the audience. I literally had a lady one time. I walked out, had the same thing happen to me. And I mean, I walked out, I hadn't talked for 30 seconds. And she said, your fly is open. Uh, I mean, she just told me, I mean, I <laughs> yeah. so you kind of say, thank you. And you, you turn your back <laughs> on the audience and right. you take care of the problem. But I mean, so I, yeah, so at, you know, this lady was going to help me out right away. Right. Yeah, they, <laughs> they gave me 30 minutes. Yeah, so then, 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 30 minutes to go walking around the yes. stage. You know, um, Paul and Les, when you want to, if you want to impress people, talk about your good. But if you really want to impact people, talk about the bad and the ugly. Yeah. And, and, and I think that this can be a very impacting video for people. And what I want to say to you is, is, um, is, is, is not a good story. It's a bad story. It's a bad story about me. It's a true story. And I tell it to you because um, it helped me tremendously. Uh, what I learned less is I really have had most of my growth out of bad experiences, not out of good experiences. I, when I get success, I just want to celebrate. And, and so this was a situation when I was a pastor in San Diego. I was traveling an awful lot, speaking. I was physically, mentally, emotionally just basically bankrupt. I was just dead flat out broke, tired. And uh, I came back to the congregation. There were three or four decisions that needed to be made kind of quickly. And we were, I, I always worked well with my board and my team and always kind of processed with them. And I just made the decisions. I just went ahead and made the decisions. And, and, and it was not like me. And so all of my key people began to look at me and say, John, what are you doing? I mean, this isn't the way you've always done it before. And, and it was a total change in leadership. And then it the kind, of, kind of over the next month, it kind of went like a cancer throughout the congregation. So I've got all these thousands of people. I've been in this congregation now for 12 years. And for the first time, they don't trust me. I mean, or they, they thought they don't trust me. They're just, 
they're kind of saying, what did he do? What, what, why did he do that? I am tipped. So as a speaker, what am I going to do? I'm going to set it all straight. <laughs> in one talk. Get a message. I am going to fix the people. <laughs> and so I get up in my little place where, I'm going to, where I do all my work and study. And I got in that Old Testament passage. I love it where the people criticized Moses. And the earth opened up and <laughs> swallowed up the people. And I thought, wouldn't it be good if God would do that again? <laughs> I mean, think what that would do for your leadership. If, if, if all of a sudden the complainers just got swallowed by earth, you would be like the unspoken, unquestioned leader the rest of your life. Yes. So I'm preparing this message on Moses and the ground and the swallowing up the people, and I'm just ready to give people help. I'm just, I can hardly, in fact, this is so good. I mean, this is loaded. I mean, it's biblical, and I'm just going to let them have it. I, I, it's kind of like it's on Thursday, and I can hardly wait for Sunday. In fact, I want to call them all up and say, come tonight. You know what I mean? <laughs> this message can't wait. So, I mean, I am so excited about preaching this message. I've, I mean, I'm pumped. On Saturday, I'm reviewing my sermon, mm. and God speaks to me. And, and I'm going through the sermon, and I'm saying, oh, this is going to be good. And, and God said, John, th this sermon wasn't for the congregation. Ooh. Well, I'm saying, well, who the heck was it for? It was for you. He says, you're the problem. You're the guy that did the, the turn on the people. You're, you're the guy that didn't follow through as you normally have. You're the guy that didn't have consistency in your leadership here. It's not them. It's you. And so I'm looking, and I'm saying, well, then God, what am I going to preach tomorrow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And he says, what you prepared to preach for the congregation. He said, the only difference is when you speak to them, when you get up and say, this message, I'm going to speak, you're going to listen to it. It was for me. And I preached this message. And I mean, I wept. And I, I asked their forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And then here's what's beautiful. That congregation, they stood up and they cheered and they clapped. And in what? Five minutes after I finished with that speaking, everything was good again. Because I was open with them and I was honest with them and I apologized to them because I was wrong. And I guess what I want to say about the bad in speaking is, I think there's a responsibility when you speak. You owe it to the people to be truthful to them and not BS them and not hype them and not get around there and try to talk about things that you don't live and that you don't believe. And it was a, it was, it was a huge lesson for me in the fact that if I'm going to enjoy all the good stuff that comes with communicating and speaking, I've got to own up to the bad stuff. And that was a day that I just realized from that point on, I was never going to use my speaking to fix the people. Mm -hmm. And that I was never going to teach a lesson that I hadn't taught to myself. And I was always going to be the first person to listen to my lesson to make sure that I bought into what I was saying before I was asking them to buy into what they were saying. So it was a bad day. I mean, it was a really, I mean, it was a bad couple of days. I mean, I mean, that, 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 that last 24 hours before Sunday, I mean, you know, we kind of believe that Christ is coming back again someday. And I was kind of saying, boy, today would be a good day to come back. So I don't have to do it on Sunday. And, you know, he was telling me, if I come back, I'm not getting you. So don't worry about it. You know I mean? You're going to be left behind anyway, big boy. So, you know, just get the message and go out. But it was a great lesson yeah. for me as far as helping me understand that there is a tremendous responsibility that comes when you communicate with people. But your willingness to apologize says a lot about your character. There's a saying, judge a man not by what he does, but what he does that he doesn't have to do. And to judge the true quality of a man is what he's doing when nobody's looking. Mm -hmm. So when nobody's looking, you had a conversation with God that told you, don't practice what you preach, preach what you practice. Oh, that's good. That's good. You kind of sound like God. <laughs> that's kind well, of, he's got the voice less. for it. I'm telling you right now, yeah. if God doesn't sound like you when I go to heaven, I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> you know that, you know that. <laughs> Tell us, uh, I, I remember a story uh, I heard you speak one time where you were, you were out speaking about success during the day and, and, and sleeping on the floor of a building in Chicago at night. The Penobscot building, 21st floor. <laughs> you remember it, Yes, huh? bathing in the sink down the hall and telling people during the day, you have the power to live your dreams. And I remember one time around 1.30 in the morning, the janitorial staff, they would come in to clean. And so Larry D'Angie, who was there with me, and my cousin Boo, we ran and hid in the closet. And the guy came and, for some reason, opened up the closet door. We said, we just heard from y'all. 
And the guy said he went down and told management that they found us hiding in the closet in our underwear. <laughs> I had to go up there and, and say, no, Explain no, that yeah. one, right, right. I had to go up and I had to explain. I said, we just working late. And, and so the guys kind of startled us. And so we were hiding from them. <laughs> so, but it was a tough, that was a tough time. They said, during the good times, you put her in your heart. The yeah. tough times, you put her in your pocket. And, and, and I say to people, you have dreams. Think it not strange that you face the fiery furnaces of the world. You will, not you might, you will have tribulations, you will have setbacks, and, and, and things are going to happen that you can't anticipate, but I call them character building experiences. That's how you grow, that's, that's how we develop ourselves, because we have to be the message, and, and, and we have to be the messenger. And so that those, those times that I look back on, I'll go through it all again to do the work that I'm doing. Oh, there's never been anybody that has succeeded without paying a great price. My dad had the expression, let's pay now, play later. Yes. Mm. In fact, he said, if you play now, you'll pay later. See, he said, you're going to pay. Mm. The question is not, do you pay? Right. The question is, do you pay on the front end or do you pay on the back? He said, if you pay on the front end, he said, then you can play a lot longer. But he said, if you wait to pay on the back end, it, it compounds with interest. Mm. I mean, doors only, there's no such thing as one opening door, Paul. Sure. It's a door that opens up to a door that opens up to a door that opens up to a door that's opened up. And can I tell you something? The doors stop when you stop paying the price. You got to push every one of those doors. Yes. You know, Bill, Bill Gove, who is probably one of the godfathers of, of the speaking Great industry. Speaker. <clears throat> yes. He said that a pro is at their best regardless, regardless of who's in the yeah. audience. And I know each of you have shared with me stories of when you've shown up. Yep. And one person is there. I remember you telling me a story of one woman in the audience and lots of chairs. Right. And she and came. And said, "Mom, thanks for coming." <laughs> and, 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 but but, but yes. you still delivered. Yeah. Yes. Will, will, will you share that story? And what would have happened to Les Brown if you didn't pay that price? Because the prices, the prices you two have paid, isn't just in financial. It's no. it's the prices in humility. It's the prices sure. in in kind of the the kick to the ego. Will yes. you share that? Well, during that time, you know, one of the things I believe, you have to do your best at all times and under all circumstances. I had an event that one person showed up and the, the head of the hospital was there. And so I didn't even know that he was there. But the other speakers who were on the program, they left. I came there and I said, ma'am, are you the only person here? She said, yes. I said, well, look out. I started speaking to her, walking back and forth. I, I had her laughing and cracking up. She was giving me high fives and gave me a standing ovation. There you <laughs> so, go. That's so that, and it was unanimous. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> and so the president of the, the hospital saw me, and he said, seated in the back. He said, every year when we do this, it was about a, a cancer screening um, event they were having, he said, I want you to come back because you spoke to her. Like, there were a 1,000 people here. So you have to give your best at all times, under all circumstances. Absolutely. I, that reminds me of my friend Andy Stanley, who one time says, mm. do for one what you would want to do for everyone. Mm. In other words, value the one. If, if, you can, can I tell you, if you can't value the one, you can't value the audience. Wow. It all starts with one. Wow. Wow. No wow. doubt about it. I remember going to what Kansas about? City when they... <clears throat> <laughs> when, when, when the, I was losing $3,000 to speak at a, my first leadership convention, there were only 17 people that registered, mm -hmm. and they said, don't go, you're going to lose $3,000. I said, of course I'm going. Mm -hmm. I, I said, I'd be there, they're going to be there. And I went there and gave it my best shot, and, and I've often thought, well, if, if I wouldn't have shown up for an event that I was going to lose money on, I'm not sure I'd ever gotten to an event that I was going to make money on. Mm. Wow. Hey, it's like the kid who one time I was signing books, and he said, he looked at me and there were, what, 2,000 people in the audience and they all paid, I don't know, $500 each or something, so he was doing some math. And he came up to me and said, you know what, I'd like to do what you do. Well, I said, of course you would. I said, I got a question for you. Would you like to do what I've done? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so you could do what, what I, I do. do. That's the price, Paul. That's the bad. That's, that's, the, that's the hill we got to go. Wow. I'd like to, if you could just both, just give a word of encouragement, uh, just a. A shout out to them, those people who are aspiring coaches and teachers and speakers. If you could just give them a word of encouragement to stick with it just a little bit longer, that it gets better. It really does, and it's worth it. When you're doing what you want to do, and that is make a difference in people's lives. I have a saying, when life knocks you down, try and land on your back, because if you could look up, you could get up.
<laughs> continue to stay on the path. That's you have better. something special. You've got a voice, you have a story, and there are people waiting to hear your story that will change their lives. That's so good, my friend. My, my word would be very simple. I wish you could have seen me in the beginning. See, the problem is people see less than they see me now. And you just say, they're good. Well, of course we're good. We've done this 12,000 times. If you can't get good after 12,000 times, <laughs> think about it. Right. You need, uh, hello, how dumb are you? How bad are you? I mean, 12,000 times. Yes. See, I, w I really do. I wish you could have seen me when I started. Because if you could have seen me when I started, you'd be encouraged. <laughs> You'd be encouraged because you would watch me and you'd say, oh my gosh, he wasn't very good. I'm not trying to be humble. I'm being truthful with you. I wasn't very good. And that's what I want you to know. People don't get great overnight. They don't just get up and say, I want to speak and get good. And they don't get up and say, I want to speak and command a large audience nor a lot of money. That doesn't happen. We all start. Can I tell you something? We all start bad. Now, that's the bad, and we pay a price to get good. That's the good. But if you don't do the bad, and if you don't start there, you'll never get good. So again, I say to you, I wish you could have started and seen me when I began. You would be so encouraged in your speaking. You'd be so motivated. You would walk out of here and roll up your sleeves and say, I can do this because I know what John did, and I'm better than that. Because you are. Trust me. You are. Ed Foreman said, anything that's worth doing is worth doing badly. Mm. And I have yes. proven that statement. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth doing right if you know how to do it, but if you Many don't times, know how to do yeah. it, it's, it's worth, worth doing, doing badly bad, so. until you get it right. You got it that's right. right. Yeah, he's right. Well, again, this has been Paul Martinelli with the president of the John Maxwell team. I really hope that you've enjoyed video number two, The Bad. We're going to come back in about two more days. You're going to get another video. And this is the last in the series. And this is the ugly. This is where you're going to hear some of the funny stories. Not that these weren't funny, but I know that you guys have some others that are pretty good that, that you're going to want to hear. So please go ahead and add a comment uh, down below. Be sure to share this video series. We're doing this for you. For those of you who are aspiring to be speakers, teachers, trainers, and coaches, we want to add value to your life. We'll see you in a few days. Thanks again, Les. Thanks again, John. Thank you. Thank you.